relation to the other parts of the body which we express by saying that they form part of it yet most certainly if they ever did not form part of the body they would be exactly what they are when they do that they differ intrinsically from the properties of the dead arm and that they form part of the body are propositions not analytically related to one another there is no contradiction in supposing them to retain such intrinsic differences and yet not to form part of the body but b when we are told that a living arm has no meaning or significance apart from the body to which it belongs a different fallacy is also suggested to have meaning or significance is commonly used in the sense of to have importance and this again means to have value either as a means or as an end now it is quite possible that even a living arm apart from its body would have no intrinsic value whatever although the whole of which it is a part has great intrinsic value owing to its presence thus we may easily come to say that as a part of the body it has greater value whereas by itself it would have none and thus that its whole meaning lies in its relation to the body but in fact the value in question obviously does not belong to it at all to have value merely as a part is equivalent to having no value at all but merely being a part of that which has it owing however to neglect of this distinction the assertion that a part has value as a part which it would not otherwise have easily leads to the assumption that it is also different as a part from what it would otherwise be for it is in fact true that two things which have a different value must also differ in other respects hence the assumption that one and the same thing because it is a part of a more valuable whole at one time than at another therefore has more intrinsic value at one time than at another has encouraged the self-contradictory belief that one and the same thing may be two different things and that only in one of its forms is it truly what it is for these reasons i shall where it seems convenient take the liberty to use the term organic with a special sense i shall use it to denote the fact that a whole has an intrinsic value different in amount from the sum of the values of its parts i shall use it to denote this and only this the term will not imply any causal relation whatever between the parts of the whole in question and it will not imply either that the parts are inconceivable except as parts of that whole or that when they form parts of such a whole they have a value different from that which they would have if they did not understood in this special and perfectly definite sense the relation of an organic whole to its parts is one of the most important which ethics has to recognize a chief part of that science should be occupied in comparing the relative values of various goods and the grossest errors will be committed in such comparison if it be assumed that wherever two things form a whole the value of that whole is merely the sum of the values of those two things with this question of organic wholes then we complete the enumeration of the kind of problems with which it is the business of ethics to deal twenty three in this chapter i have endeavoured to enforce the following conclusions one the peculiarity of ethics is not that it investigates assertions about human conduct but that it investigates assertions about the property of things which is denoted by the term good and the converse property denoted by the term bad it must in order to establish its conclusions investigate the truth of all such assertions except those which assert the relation of this property only to a single existent two this property by reference to which the subject matter of ethics must be defined is itself simple and indefinable and three all assertions about its relation to other things are of two and only two kinds they either assert in what degree things themselves possess this property or else they assert causal relations between other things and those which possess it finally for in considering the different degrees in which things themselves possess this property we have to take account of the fact that a whole may possess it in a degree different from that which is obtained by summing the degrees in which its parts possess it end of chapter one